Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely evening. The person you see on screen is Jessa Jones. Jessa Jones runs iPad Rehab, an esteemed data recovery and iPhone board repair education company in New York. She also is a board member of Repair Preservation Group and Repair Preservation Group Action Fund. She has fought for right to repair for the past seven years, showing up at legislatures around the country. And above all, she is one of my personal best friends. And I am proud, happy, and honored to call her such. This is a video we did about seven years ago of after a clash, just going through mail. And, you know, we, we've always kind of... Uh, We've always been good friends. So she was incredibly excited when this Apple self-service repair program came out. And she actually bought all of the tools necessary. She spent something like $2,000 to buy every single one because she was so excited to try them out. And uh, after trying them out, she decided, I'm going to try and replace a cracked screen with this tool. So she takes the old cracked screen off of an iPhone, and the tool is, you know, it does its job, but the old screen is now more destroyed than it was before by a large margin. She puts the new screen on, and then she gets this. So it says, by tapping agree, you agree that Apple may collect images of this device, which may be linked to the device serial number, as well as diagnostic data from this device, and any paired accessories or other devices, including the device serial number, device name, information about wireless and wired networks you connect to, daily count of call attempts, and information about app usage data and call duration. Apple may use the images and the diagnostic data to determine the device's trade and value. Apple may also use the images for related audit purposes and to improve our products and services. In addition, Apple and its partners may use the diagnostics data to troubleshoot issues with this device, to improve our products and services, and for anti-fraud purposes. For information on Apple's privacy policy, see this website over here. Now, this is something that's kind of strange. And again, this shows up once she's done with the repair, once she's put the new screen in. The old screen at this point is already garbage because when you use a tool to remove it, the old screen is not going to come out in good condition. And what she's doing right here is she is trying to pair the, old, the flood illuminator to the device so that she may have face ID. So she says, I found this incredibly invasive and there was no way to say no. It comes after I've destroyed my original screen. I did hit disagree and that closed the app, leaving me with no face ID because the paired face ID is on my old screen. I had to hit agree for Apple to pair my new flood illuminator and restore face ID because of serialization and remove the not genuine message. I feel violated. This plus the machine broke my old screen so I could not go backwards. Now this is particularly interesting to me because Apple tends to take a stance on privacy of valuing user privacy. One of the selling points of getting an iPhone versus an Android phone is that, you know, on Android you're just going to have an experience that respects your privacy less than the experience that you'll get using an iPhone that runs iOS where Apple again they're not making money off of your off of your data the same way that Google is there's a different incentive structure and the entire operating system is supposedly built to respect your privacy. Now, there's a couple of questions that I have when looking at this. Firstly, what do they mean when they say collecting images of this device? Are we talking about, you know, like DD if equals dev slash SDA of slash, you know, dev slash Apple's drive? Or are we talking about like images on the device? Are we talking about any full image of everything that's there? Why is that necessary in order to pair a flood illuminator to the new device? I don't think that that would be necessary to pair the flood illuminator to the new device. When you say that you're, that you are collecting information on call attempts, information on app usage data and call duration, what does any of that information have to do with pairing the flood illuminator to the device so that face ID can work again. And above all, what do you mean when you say Apple may also use the images for related audit purposes? What are those related audit purposes? Are you talking about audits of employee customer service, audits of employee repairs, audits of my phone? What do you mean by audit? And why, again, is that necessary for pairing a flood illuminator to the device? The flood illuminator is one of the pieces that's necessary to be paired to the device so that Face ID will work again. If you just take any old screen and you toss it on the device, even if it's an OEM Apple screen, if you don't, carry, if you don't bring the flood illuminator from the old screen to the new one, it's not going to work properly because it's paired. So to do that pairing, why is all this necessary? I'll be honest with you, it, I don't think that Apple's doing this to be evil or make money. I think that this was a genuine screw-up because they do appear to be a company that actually values user privacy. I don't believe that they're you know, actually going to take the images. and they, they, This doesn't make sense for a company that cares about user privacy to have 
this particular disclaimer here. So a part of me wonders if this is actually an error since this is a program that w that just came out. I really do hope that that is an error and I do hope that this changes because I see no reason why somebody would have to agree to all of this just to be able to change the screen in their phone and retain Face ID. I think all of this is unnecessary and I think it goes against the brand that Apple has of respecting user privacy. Uh, if any of you are curious about this self-service repair program, I talked about it in this video for 17 minutes and I did not bring this up because the program had not been out for a long enough period of time to actually purchase screens and tools through it. But now that it has been out long enough for people to actually get tools, I have a couple of questions for all of you. The first question that I have is when you go through this program and you utilize this process to replace your screen, do you get the same message that Jessa Jones got when she went to replace her screen over here? The second question that I have for all of you is do you think that this is appropriate? Or do you think that this is inappropriate? And do you think this is something that should be corrected by Apple if this is something that you're getting on your own phone? I personally think this is a bridge too far, but again, to be clear, at the very least, they're being upfront about it. It's not, you know, they're not hiding this in a 900 page EULA that nobody's gonna read. At least they're saying upfront that, you know, F you and your privacy in a way that's really easily readable. But I think I think it kind of sucks that if you disagree, you either have to agree to something that's just seemingly really, really invasive or hit disagree and then have a phone where Face ID doesn't work, even though you bought Apple's tools and you bought Apple's screen from Apple's website. No, I, 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 th I honestly think that this is an oversight. I don't think that this is intentional. If this was intentional, this is, in my opinion, massively stupid given their brand but i would chalk this up to just being a mistake and as much as i dislike them as a business i wouldn't be surprised if they wound up correcting this and editing some of the language over here because it just doesn't seem to make sense but let me know what you think in the comments down below that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something